Welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta and I'm Connie. And we're here to, you know, talk yeah. about shit. <laughs> and how it gets real. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Definitely not necessarily in that order. <laughs> All right, I guess we should start out about us. Connie, why don't you go first? Great, put me on the spot. Tell us about your <laughs> fabulous self. Well... I have a day job and it's boring. So we're going to skip over that. I, I have a husband. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's also boring. Yeah. No, my husband is a goofball, a ginger. I'm allowed to call him that, but no one else is allowed to call him that. And his name is Thomas. And we have our little puppy, Flynn, who is absolutely adorable. I and we live Thomas on here and not Tom. Like he's become formal on the podcast. I call, I also call him Tommy. TJ. There's a lot of nicknames for this man. Uh, so, his mom calls him Keeper. <laughs> he has lots of, he has multi personality disorder. So uh, just that kidding. explains a lot. Hey! <laughs> you know, we could say the same thing about both of us. Just saying. No, we could. We could. We could for sure. And our whole family. And Literally. our whole family, which is why we're here. Pretty much. So, Rietta, how about you? Because I'm boring, so you're the No, I'm boring, too. I don't have a day job. This is my day job, um, pretty much. I'm married as well. My husband's name is Kyle. He is a United States Marine. I'm currently without him, which is probably why I do things like this, because, you know, I got to give him reasons to stay married to me. (laughs) (laughs) We have a son. He's seven, soon to be eight. And we have a puppy, too, and a kitty. And they actually get along which I know, I guess it's not supposed to be normal in the dog and cat world, but they're buddies. I know. I think Flynn would like a cat. He has been around cats and he likes them. He follows them around. So I'd be very curious, but just not in this house. Our house is too small. There's no room for a litter box, you know? Yeah, you got to have room for that litter box, you know, keep it far away. Yeah, there's just, and it tracks everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm... There's yeah, there's no optimal space in my house for a litter box. Or else I would have already gotten a cat. Cause Flynn loves them. He loves any animal, literally any animal. I never thought I would get a cat again, but I gotta say, he's a pretty cool cat. He looks but absolutely adorable. He is pretty cute. And none of these people know what we're talking about because they can't see. So that's fine. You know that if it's a cat or if it's a puppy, it's probably adorable. So we can just move on. Yeah. Let's move on to why we're here. So happy Love Day, you know, because it is Valentine's Day to all you out there, uh, singles, in complicated relationships or otherwise. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the reason we kind of started this podcast, um, not to say that we're the only people that have a crazy family. Um, but I think ours is definitely up there. <laughs> For sure. And, uh, Connie and our, our cousins, just P.S., we didn't FYI. say that. Just FYI. So we have the same family, a lot of the and same we've known stories. each other for, you know, our whole lives. Our whole lives, you know, not a big deal. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> so, uh, we wanted to bring out some of what we've seen, not even just relationships, but, you know, family and all that kind of crazy stuff and talk to people and get people involved and... Let them know that they're not alone and all that kind of good stuff. And in general, how do you deal with family? You love them so much. They drive you absolutely up a wall, but you got to love them. And they do like you do lean on them and they do help support you. So we're also going through that dynamic. But specifically today is more about regular uh, relationships, non-family, like spouses and significant others, or on the flip side, being single. Because I got a lot of single friends, and I love sending them single memes. I don't know if they enjoy that, but I do. (laughs) I hope they do. But yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of single friends too, and um, I actually just saw on Facebook a couple days ago, there is a, you know how they have boxes for everything now you can subscribe to a box there's literally one called like single swag or something like that and they send you all this like they send you all this like self-love stuff which is i think pretty cool so single people out there i thought condoms was my first time like so they're just sending you a bunch of condoms (laughs) oh (laughs) man i i hope not (laughs) it would be funny it it would be funny but it'd also be kind of cruel yeah but if you're single i guess i don't know 
they assume that you're just going and sleeping around. I don't know. I guess. I it could know. be both. It could be both. It depends on who you are. That's if a big assumption. Think, it is a really big assumption. Self-love is definitely better a, of a, you know. And actually, the box, too, um, wasn't just necessarily for singles. Like, obviously, single swag it could be. But, like, it's just a self-love box, too. So if you just wanted to get some love for yourself, it was a pretty cool box. And we have no paid sponsorship with them. So, hey, single swag, hook us up. <laughs> <laughs> we would like all of the paid sponsorship in reality. All the paid but, sponsorship. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's beside the point. So, Connie had brought up a good topic, though, when we were discussing this beforehand um, about how kind of Valentine's Day forces you to put relationships on a pedestal and how it's just kind of, I've always viewed it as a Hallmark holiday personally, but teach their own. So um, kind of, why don't you kind of get into that? Well, I feel like it can do both. It, I feel like it depends on the person. Cause I don't want to put anybody in a box and say a hundred percent. It's just a Hallmark holiday. Yeah. But it, it pretty much is. It's also a great excuse for a date night. Like me and my husband are kind of strapped That's for true. cash always. It seems because we've been remodeling our house. So this and Valentine's Day weds. and we're newlyweds. So we're just broke. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, he actually got super excited for Valentine's Day this year. And That's it has nothing cute. to do with me. It all has to do with the fact that we bought a three pound ribeye steak bone in. So he is all <laughs> excited to have the steak. And it is, of course he is so cute. <laughs> I've never seen a grown male excited for steak before, but like it was our quote unquote excuse to buy something a little bit more expensive than we would like normally buy. See guys, so guys, Valentine's Day is not about love it's about steak <laughs> that's what we've all learned from this that's what it's all if you want to get your man really excited just go get a steak it's all he needs well wasn't there i'm pretty sure because kyle reminds me every year god love him that there's like a steak and blowjob day like it's legitimately a holiday for real yeah I'm, wow i'm surprised tom doesn't remind me about this but i mean he tries for to get both of those things every day so that's that's a typical guy for you pretty much. not hating on you gentlemen we love it we're fine with it we're fine we're okay <laughs> we deal i'm just kidding we deal yeah we deal but um and but yes in in general i think uh Valentine's Day can do one or two things, can bring you closer together because you're spending a little bit more time together, possibly. Mm -hmm. Or you're just putting a person on a on a pedestal and just it's just a Hallmark holiday. You're just getting just yeah. kind of spending money to spend money. It's kind of the same thing I think for singles too. Like it either makes singles feel like it's it. a terrible reminder that you're single which it shouldn't be, or it's this, like, well, F it, I'm going to enjoy it anyway type day. Yes. Yeah, my two girlfriends are actually doing that. They're going on a date with each other. I like that. Because they're single. So do I. I was never single enough to think of that idea. Single for long enough to think about that idea. I just think I never thought about it because I was just like, eh, Valentine's Day. And my birthday's so day. close to Valentine's Day. That, like, I'm more focused on my birthday than Valentine's Day. But that's just me. I would be, too. You know. Close it's, enough. It's the same thing with Thanksgiving for me. My birthday is just yeah. so close to You're it. so close, yeah. It's so convoluted. It's just, like, whatever. Well, since we were talking about it earlier, I'm just going to throw it out there anyway. We're going to leave names out of this because our family is embarrassed enough. So we'll just... We'll, we'll leave names out of it. But we have this these lovely family members... Food. <laughs> yeah we have person a no we don't need to do that um we have a family member that's been working for a long long time and has gotten sick recently and she in turn turned to her husband and said you know hey i can't do this anymore but we need health care benefits i need you to get a job and his response in so many words was basically no so we're going to kind of talk about that. And if you guys can leave comments on our Facebook page or our Instagram about what you think about it, if you were sick and you asked your spouse to help you out and they said no, what your reaction would be. 
honestly, my reaction is, I mean, they would tell me that, like, you don't know our relationship. That's what they would say. Because they've said that about pretty much any conflict that they've ever had. But in my opinion, that's just a bad relationship because it should be a give and take. I think my husband would go insane if either one of us was not working or got sick and needed the other one to take up the slack. It's just a give and take and it should be both of our responsibility to talk to one another and not just say no. Well, and the other thing is, like, that's part of your marriage vows. You said for better or for worse. You said for sickness and in health. And when your spouse is literally coming to you and saying, I can't work anymore. I, I've i worked my whole life. It's your turn. And for them to say no, just it's kind of a, it's kind of a kick in the ass. Yeah. And it should be more because I'm sh- I know she does want to work a little bit. But, like, maybe it's also more of um, I'm going to be taking a lesser role because she we know she's going to. She's not going to be able to get right. the same position that she had before because mm-hmm. of a couple of reasons. And then you're saying, okay, if I take a step back, have a less stressful job, work less, I'm going to need you to – equal us out so that we're still making the same income we can still afford the same things we don't have to be destitute or anything like absolutely that. it needs to be a little bit more equal right and that's that's i mean and that's that's a marriage right you know yeah. give and take it's and that's why people equal. are single <laughs> and that is why people are single um well, because you know not everybody can let deal with those types of troubles with another person Mm -hmm. like you really have to work at it it's not just something that's easy it's a lot of communication a lot of talking stuff like that and and being able to deal with other people's faults because clearly we're all not perfect just like that example right and uh you know especially like our generation kind of nice generation and even younger social media is kind of destroyed relationships in a way because everything is at your fingertips you can do a lot of things that in our grandparents day who were married for 70 years couldn't do so it it almost I mean there's great things about social media obviously like what we're doing right now but there's it takes away in a certain level too like that communication and that interaction you have with your spouse oh yeah for sure because everybody's just on their phone like a zombie and I mean I get bad bad at it as well and I try to set like limits on my phone and I don't want to just sit be sitting next to my husband just on my phone or like texting him even through my phone when he's right next to me that has now become like a pet peeve of mine because I've seen my other friends and their partners do that and like I don't even understand that now, Why? I don't understand you can talk you're right there yeah that doesn't make any sense and I'm just as bad as the next person too especially when my husband is in here um Cause I'm like, okay, I'll just, you know, go around on social media for the next couple hours or whatever. And especially cause I'm not technically working, but it's still not an excuse. And, uh, we need to, we need to be social with people in real life and not on social media. There should be a good, at least balance, just like a relationship, just yep. like everything. Everyone needs balance in everything. I know. And in it's so hard to life. find that balance. I was actually, um, just reading about that, uh, I just started reading Rachel Hollis's second book, um, Girl Stop Apologizing. She was just talking about balance and how, like, balance really isn't really there. You're just constantly shifting back and forth between different areas. Because I, I think people always feel like they have to find the balance. And when they're not finding the balance, they feel like they're failing. And you're not necessarily failing. You just have it. You're just, it's just always shifting. It's a moving dynamic. Yeah. I can see that. But same concept. You know, you have to find what works Mm -hmm. for sure as is life I can't wait to hear all the comments on that because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be like I would have kicked him out (laughs) probably I would kick him out personally I'd be like okay but they've had a million fights like that over the years and they're still (laughs) together and you can't say the same for uh, the people that raised me (laughs) 
I love how it just went to the people that raised you. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about my parents because they're probably going to listen to this and be like, wow, Connie, just throw us in the shitter. But they did not. There is one side of that party that did not particularly work hard to keep the relationship together. Well, and that, you know, that does happen, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems to be happening more because a lot of people don't want to work at it. Not saying yeah. that your parents... <laughs> <laughs> not saying that your parents didn't work at it but there's a lot of younger generation people that don't want to put the effort into trying to keep it to make it work not saying everybody of course nobody fits into one box like we've already talked about but it's hard work not enough people say how hard it is to be in a relationship or married or whatever it's not it's just so long. yeah yeah mm-hmm. it's not just you know rainbows and butterflies yeah you have to actually work at it and Shocking. Yeah, right. But also being single from an outsider's view, looking at my friends that are single seems to also be a lot of work because they have shown me some crazy posts that people have sent them and vice versa. One guy told my friend, if you lose any more weight, I can't be with you. And her main goal is to lose weight. So she was like, okay, gosh. Bye. <laughs> like even no. though like a lot of work, it's just different work because you're just trying to find out if the other person is compatible or not. Oh, absolutely. Um, I would honestly not want to be in the dating pool right now. I'm not really ever. glad I'm married. Because <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I, if I wasn't married now, I'd just be single for the rest of my life because I would not want to deal with what people are dealing with out there in the singles market. Yeah, because they're it's just crazy. And that is why we ended up in a, uh, like a chat with me and my two friends that are single. And they just send me all this hilarious shit. It's so funny. I'm like, what is going on with people? And then my second thought is, thank God, I don't have to deal with any of that. We'll have to post some of the screenshots. We'll leave names off of it and be like, this is what is happening in the dating pool out there for y'all if you were interested. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't know if my friends would particularly like that because it's only my two friends. They'd be well, like, Connie, only, hey. <laughs> only with their permission. And of course, we wouldn't expose their names unless they wanted to. Well, yeah. But, it, well, they would for sure know from me, though. They'd be like, mm, we know who it is. You only <laughs> have two single friends and they're us. <laughs> well, that's all right. Them knowing who it is and like the rest of the world knowing who it is it's is a little different. different. Yeah, a little true. different. And you know what? They laugh about this stuff all the time and talk about it even in public, how crazy things are. So it's okay. It'll be fine. I mean, if you don't laugh about it. You're just going to cry. Yeah, you might as well laugh about it. I mean, why the hell not? Yeah. I would. (laughs) For sure. Anyway. What else? Do you want to talk about I'm just excited to see what people are going to say because I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we can uh, uh, take out all these like short pauses when we splice this stuff together. Sorry. Oh uh, no. Check. I'll I'll learn how to edit. You know. Down to the second. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It'll yeah. be good practice. It'll yeah. be good practice for sure. Um, let's see what else. So. Singles out there basically don't feel pressured on Valentine's Day. It's just a freaking holiday. Like, go out, do you, have fun, get a massage, go have dinner by yourself, go see a movie. Go out whatever. with friends. Go out yeah, with go more out. single friends. Go there troll. You go. go out with your friends. And go. not worry about it. Go to a military base and find a, find a Marine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey. hey. No, it's only because I think about Luke, okay? Or my brother. Oh, yeah, your brother, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my brother. <laughs> well, and they're not all as nice, so. <laughs> I, that, that's true. But whatever floats your boat, uh, just try not to get, I know, de- depression and stuff is really high right now. So just try to make sure you get out and not single friends, check on your single friends and check on your friends and relationships, too, because, hell, you never know. Well, and of course... Um, like it's 
Valentine's Day is during the winter. So it's already like dark and miserable and cold. Now let's make you think. For you, maybe. Mad. Well, yes, for me, not for <laughs> the privileged people in Hawaii like Rietta. <laughs> Uh, but now let's make you feel bad that you're single. Yeah, my mom was just telling me that it was going to get really cold. So. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm, it is. I totally forgot your mom was back in Illinois. Yeah, she's back. <laughs> oh, sorry. You are not and allowed to cough. How dare you? Tell me about it. <laughs> anyway, so Rietta, what do you do when Kyle is away and it's Valentine's Day? Is it just like another day? Do you guys have like a call? It's or do you usually just, just another day. It's usually yeah. just another day. He's usually pretty good about like sending me at least a text unless he doesn't have service if he's out of the country or he'll send me a card or flowers. And I actually, I honestly told him to stop sending me flowers because I don't know if y'all have checked flower companies rightly but the prices are outrageous yes i was like dude don't i love you and i appreciate the thought that you're sending me flowers but for the price just i'll go buy them at the grocery store myself and pretend they're from you yeah right and also, I'd, rather flowers. Have, I'd rather have like chocolate covered strawberries or yeah. something yeah sherry's berries is the bomb there's another potential sponsor hook us up sherry's berries <laughs> We will eat all of the berries. All of the berries. I love that place. Their strawberries are the bomb. But seriously, too, when you go to, like, Jewel or whatever grocery store you have, I feel like their flowers last longer anyway. If I buy flowers from Jewel versus the ones that get delivered, they last, like, two weeks longer. Oh, for sure. And when I go to buy flowers... Or maybe it's, I'm just good at this or something. I don't know. Or maybe my vases are small. But I go and buy, like, the three bundles of, like, wildflowers or whatnot from Jewel. And those three bundles, normally I can make three vases of flowers. And I put one in the kitchen, one in the bathroom, and one in my bedroom on my bedside table. So I have flowers everywhere. I love it. I love it. I'm the same way. I love well, I love flowers. You can't not be happy with flowers around. Well, especially since the since my wedding, people have now asked me to do flowers. I was like, okay. There's another side job for you. I did my stepbrother's, what is it called, a uh, shower. I did my, a couple of my friends' weddings to do their flowers. Just And it wasn't, I'm not saying it was something side hustling. crazy. Yeah, clearly. Except for I didn't get paid for any of those. Um, I, one, I was put, my, one, I was clipping flowers in the sink of my hotel room. <laughs> I looked <laughs> insane. I'm just saying. Um, but I didn't really get anything out of it. I was just doing to, to help people cut down on costs because weddings are expensive. Well, I didn't have a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so when he's gone, that's pretty much it. Like, we at least have a conversation, and um, he sends cards and all that stuff. I thought my phone was on silent. Apparently not. Turn that off. I don't um, know where mine went. <laughs> so yeah, and we used to have a, at least have a call. He tries anyway if he can. So we do the best we can. Other, you know, other military wives know you, you do the best with what you got. And, uh, oh, yeah. you know, you kind of just learn to roll with it um, in the Marine Corps we always say Semper Gumby, which basically means be flexible. Oh, all right. Yeah, a little, little saying we came up with because things constantly change and it's never the same. And uh, so it's hard for people that, you know, like to plan because you can plan, but that plan is probably going to change three or four times. So we make it worse. Oh, my God, that would drive me up a wall because, you know, you know yeah. that I am the biggest planner out there. And I used to be a big planner ooh. too, and I still do to like an, an extent. extent. But you know, you can only do so much, and I just kind of had to learn to roll with it, lean with it, rock with it. <laughs> We're showing our age now. Oh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. In general, this is actually like the first time for Valentine's Day that like. At least it seems like it for a while that we've not made a production, but like that Tom's been really excited about it. That I'm like pretty excited about it because I like steak. But yeah, yeah. Like 
previously like it's just like cards candy maybe some flowers like and now I have Tom he brings it up every day like oh my god it's almost Valentine's Day I'm so excited <laughs> that's so he cute was, yeah and he was telling me his plans for this day he's like I'm gonna get it out Thursday and I'm gonna start thawing it because it's three pounds <laughs> we're gonna start it in the fridge then we're gonna move it to the sink I'm like okay that's nice. like thanks thanks for the detailed plan about the steak that I didn't need Hey, and I'm making lobster mac, so Ooh. I know. Found Send me it. some of that. <laughs> I'll take a photo of it and be like, hey, look at this. <laughs> so good. <laughs> See, I think that, speaking of photos, we'll play off of that. I think that's another reason people feel pressured about Valentine's Day, because people can Ooh, post like, totally. look at this ring that I got for Valentine's Day. Look at this necklace I got. Look, look at these flowers I got. And then other people are like, well, I didn't get anything. Or, like, look at how happy we are. We're so much happier and because we're, we're in a relationship, which is not mm -hmm. necessarily the truth, and it's definitely not the truth all the time. No, and you have to remember, social media is what people want you to see. They're oh, not sure. showing you the fights that they're having. They're not showing you, you know, the background of their life. So you have to remember that as perfect as they might look on social media, they're not that perfect in real life. And actually, I have kind of a funny story about that. So Do you share um, picture wise. So I knew this girl in college and I still have her on my Instagram. And occasionally she like posts this picture of this ring that mm. like, I remember she bought for herself and is like, Oh my God, my boyfriend is the best, like giving me this ring or whatever. I'm like, girl, you bought that yourself. He won't <laughs> propose to you. He does. He's not interested in it. Then I heard like a bunch of other stories about like him being pretty much just like a jerk. Like oh. th them always like fighting, breaking up, getting back together. Like neither one will like commit. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, sure. So it can be also the complete opposite. Somebody could be saying, oh yeah, look at what my boyfriend got me. And in reality, she bought it for herself. <laughs> And exactly. also, I would have more pride about buying something for myself than somebody buying it for me. I agree. Also, a good deal. I love a good deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think that's in the shrink gene for sure. And it's actually in the Vic gene, too. So I got it from both sides. But we're definitely deal shoppers. Well, except for one person who you've already brought up who has been sick. She, like, yelled at me one time for saying, like, no, I wanted to get this because it's on clearance. Mm -hmm. And she was like, is that all you look at is clearance? If you see something on regular price, just buy it. I'm like, well, I like a good sale. I don't want to just buy, <laughs> like, an overpriced top. We all know that a ton of the clothes aren't particularly what they're worth. Like, they're not yeah. on sale for what – they're not being bought for what they're worth. Right. Well, and the thing about her is, too, she, she works hard for her money. If she wants to spend it that way – well, not anymore. Sorry. More power to her. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> but when she was, I get it. I would too if I had that kind of money. Heck yeah, man. Bring it on. But that brings me to something else, actually. You talking about the ring that your friend bought. Yeah. And like him not proposing. I'm just curious. And again, you guys can leave this on our Facebook or our Instagram or whatever. How long in a relationship would you be willing to wait before your man or woman or whoever, you know, your significant other would propose to you before you'd say, peace out? That is a really good question. And I think I find that my friends get more anxious to get married the longer they've been on the dating scene. And I think that's because they want the stability. Well, and again, it also plays off of like, all your friends are married and all your family is married. So then you're, oh, you, know, I'm you, sure. you feel like you're being left behind. Um, yeah. Well, and like, I think it, it just like, uh, you, the, as you get older, the process becomes quicker because look at my stepbrother, what mm -hmm. he met and married a girl within six months, which, Hey, if it works, that's not do it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Go for it. You've waited X amount of years for the right person. And now she's finally come, come along. That's, why wait? That, that's fine. Yeah. Why wait? But it just seems to me, I don't know if I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out in the comment section if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, Connie, like, I know, you, obviously, we know you're already married and I'm already married, too. But we'll both answer this question as well. How long would you 
like what would be your max that you'd wait before you'd be like all right I'm sorry like if we're not getting married I'm out well see the thing is is (laughs) this is another aside funny story me and Tom were in Nashville I think we were together three years at the time and they were like well why aren't you married when we were on this tour I'm like oh Mm -hmm. well I'm still in school and they were like yeah commitment issues like no honestly I'm in school Mm -hmm. and so like back then like I feel like I waited the appropriate time I just wanted to be out of school before he proposed and he proposed pretty much right after school right after I was done but see you Um, guys were still planning on it which is also the thing hey like we know we we want to get married we always knew that was the plan it was never particularly set like okay, right after she she graduates, we're going to get married. Mm -hmm. But it was, yeah, we're going to be getting married one day. Like, we've talked about it. Okay, so Um, that's part of the thing, too. You know, like, if you have a plan, like, and you're, you know, if you're young or you're, like, you guys said you waited on school, obviously that's going to play a factor into the way you answer the question. Yeah. um, For sure. So, I mean, we were together, what, six or seven years before we got engaged. We're going on nine years now altogether. Mm -hmm. Um, but like if it was after school and if I was how my friends are now, like if I was my age, but single and like going to be in a relationship or something, I don't know. I'd probably say like a year. I don't know because, you know, you're pretty settled. You have an education, you have a career, or you're at least trying to build a career. Like that's kind of what society tells you is the next step is Mm -hmm. marriage. And I definitely would not have been waiting like five years out of school to get married. No, see, and and I think I'm with you there. I think that would be the most I would wait would be a year unless – like we talked about, there was an extenuating circumstances. You're in school, you're trying to get financially stable, whatever it may be, as long as it's, Actually, I, mean, you're, I guess you're never like totally financially stable. We shouldn't even throw that in there, but whatever legitimate thing that you needed to wait for. But if we are just. Actually, I was told that my schooling shouldn't have been a legitimate reason to not get married. According to. Of course. Uh-huh. Can you tell that we can see each other and, like, I know what she's saying? Actually, <laughs> even, if I, even if I didn't see her face, I would still you know. Would know which, you would know which aunt. <laughs> yeah. Which aunt? There we go. It's getting more apparent who we're talking about. Now we've thrown the title aunt out there, but that's all right. You guys probably figured that out. Yeah. It's fine. Well, and I'm never going to listen to it. <laughs> no, that's true. And obviously, my relationship is not a very good example. <laughs> um. Because I called off a wedding and then got married shortly after. But that's a that's a long story. And we're not going to get into that. Because I wrote a book. And if you want to know the whole story, you can read my book when that comes out. <laughs> Time to yell. But still, um, yeah, I think a year would be about max for me. Because if you don't, I feel like if you don't know after being with somebody for that long. Because that's a good amount of time, I think, in my opinion. And then if you, and if you factor in getting engaged and planning a wedding, I think a year makes yeah. Because then by the time you get married, you're probably at the two-year mark. Right. Exactly. So we just want to hear what uh, what our small fan base so far. <laughs> <laughs> the small fan base of you, me, and our husbands. <laughs> hey, hey, there might be more than we think. You never know. Oh, I mean, That's true. I, I'm just being an ass. <laughs> that's what we and- do. Yes, exactly. And I'm also like fully prepared for after this is posted, a like full write up and like pro and con list or I don't know, something from my husband. I'm going to be I'm sure he's going to be like, you said um too many times. You should have better flow. Like, I'm sure he's going to have a list because he's Mr. Let me listen to all of the podcasts because that's what he does at work. Well, at least he's going to listen. That's good. Okay, my, husband, my, my husband better listen. I know he listens to Joe Rogan, but I mean. Oh my God, so does mine. Of course, because everybody of loves course. Joe Rogan. Because he's, he's real. Joe Rogan, yeah. we love you. Can we be on your show? Can you be on ours? Either one. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, be on ours. ours. He can oh go God. to Hawaii and be sitting in your bedroom or your office little area with you. Ooh, that actually went perfectly. Oh Kyle, yeah. She didn't mean it. Kyle, she didn't mean it. <laughs> Joe Rogan is not in my bedroom. I promise. Yet. <laughs> oh, man. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, 
I Make knew that was going to happen. Come through over okay, here. so what are we at? 34 minutes? It only took us 34 minutes to get inappropriate. That, that's actually pretty good. Especially for me. <laughs> that's that's real. I'm actually kind of impressed. Hey. Hey. That's that bad. We're both that bad. Come on now. Okay, fine. Okay. Fine. Let's not pretend that this is going to be for kids. It's not. No, it's not for kids. It has a swear word in the title. It's not for kids. That's true. Hey, we bleeped out the swear word. We kind People of. have to figure it out. What does that mean? Star, star, star? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's nothing. Shield your eyes. Oh, that's awesome. We also did have good examples, just for people out there that think that our family is totally crazy. Our grandma and grandpa, when our grandpa passed away, were married 68 years. So we've had one of the most... Grandma still wears the ring. (laughs) Uh, Oh, we are still counting. What is that now? 73? You have no idea. I think it's something like that. So we did have a really, really amazing example of love and relationship. I feel like that counts considering she doesn't take off the ring and like everybody still talks about grandpa. I oh, know. Mean, like he's counts. not here. It totally counts. Because I mean, it's, it's still really counts if he didn't is... have dementia, it would they would still forever oh, be married. Yeah. Oh yeah. If he was still here, they would absolutely still be married. But you know, just to put it out there, we did have a really great example. Um I actually did on both sides. My father's mother and father were married for a long, long time too. And um, your mom and dad. Yeah, my mom and dad, my mom and dad will be married. Oh, God, hold on. In August, it'll be 39 years. Getting close to 40. Yeah, because they're going to wow. they're gonna hit 40 when Kyle and I hit 10. Oh, my God, you guys have to go on, like, vacation together. Or, like, do something awesome for You're 40 and 10. It's so great. I don't think my mom's that into it because I actually brought it up and I was like, let's have a big party, you know, because we never had a wedding. Mm-hmm. It's like so let's have a big party, get a dance floor, kind of have like a like a vow renewal yeah. party and it'll be oh, fun. And my mom's sure. like, eh. Oh, really? Bummer. Know. She's a party pooper. I don't know what's going on with her. I would definitely either be down for the like the vow renewal or like even not even necessarily with family. I mean, I'm sure you and Kyle would want something that's more family focused, but also like you could just go on vacation and like do like a bowel renewal like on the beach just like private you know what I mean Mm -hmm. but that would be more for like your parents not necessarily for you and Kyle because I know you guys would probably want some bigger party for like family and friends because you didn't do that yeah I think we do I think we want to have a party for family and friends because you know they never did get to celebrate with us and then I think we'll probably we probably will take a trip too we were actually just talking the other day about um going all through Europe I have a friend that's moving to Germany, and I have a friend that's there now. So we're going to hit Germany and then hit, like, you know, Ireland and Paris and all that while you were there. <clears throat> oh, fun. It's very fun. Yeah, so. And then would, um, oh, my God. Why did, why did I just have a brain fart? Where, would your son be with you, or would uh, he be Jackson? Oh, my God. I just totally had, like, the worst brain fart. No, it's all good. <laughs> no, I bet we'd probably leave him with. Um, grandma and grandpa grandma and grandpa because you know that gives them bonding time with him too which is really important and it would give us time as a couple because you know with him being in the military and jackson being so young we don't really get a whole lot of time just us yeah which hey that's another little topic we'll throw out there real quick when you're a parent connie's not there yet she will be soon no (laughs) guys Um, (laughs) make sure you know that is a good excuse for valentine's day is it is a good excuse to leave your kids with the babysitter and spend one-on-one time with your spouse. Because, you know, even if you don't have kids, you both work, you're busy. It's a good excuse, like Connie said earlier, to go out on a date or just just spend some freaking time together. Actually, um, it, I felt so bad for a couple of friends of uh, mine and Tom's because she told me, she's like, well, it's just another day. I'm like, well, that's kind of sad. Like, you guys have how many kids together? You should d- definitely at least make a little bit of time to go out on a date or have, like, a special meal or something. It doesn't have to be big, but it yeah, should be I mean, at least a little something, especially when you have all those kids. It is a really good excuse. Absolutely. To- and, I mean, even if it's just at home, like, after the kids will go to bed, like, sit down together and pick out a movie and snuggle on the couch. Like if you don't have the money to go out or you just don't want to pay a babysitter, but you could still use that time to be together. Oh, and you could uh, 
because I am a huge fan of those desserts and chocolate strawberries. Make those chocolate strawberries at home. You don't necessarily yeah. need them. You could just make them yourself and have that as a snack while you watch the movie. Or gourmet popcorn. Both of those fabulous ideas. If anybody uses them, you're welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> yeah. Because I love a good snack as well during a good movie. Oh, yeah. My husband has – Kyle has to have popcorn. He has to. Especially um, out at the theaters, not just at home. Like you have oh, to no. have it especially. He's got to have it at home, too. He, my husband probably has popcorn almost every night of the week. Not even kidding. Really? Wow, oh, that's yeah. a lot of popcorn. He loves popcorn. We have an ear popper just for that purpose. Really? Oh, my God. That's great. We, yep. we got um, – I don't know if it's the same thing, but, like, we got this glass – bowl popper popcorn thing that goes in the microwave I ended up donating it because we never eat popcorn and it's supposed to like pop all in the bowl and it goes in the microwave and it's just like supposed to be it it is it's a very interesting concept we just don't eat popcorn well we used to always do it in a in a just a pot on the oven that's the only way I ever made popcorn my parents like we never had the microwave kind my parents never bought it It was always in a pot so I taught Kyle how to do it that way and he loved it like he stopped buying the stuff in the bags and then he found this air popper which is even healthier you know because it's not using the oil so we've progressed oh that does sound good though I just don't I don't bother I'm sorry (laughs) I don't either but he loves it so whatever floats his boat yeah, if that's your snack, that's your snack. I, I just have to, I don't have a salty to- tooth, I have a sweet tooth, and it literally kills me. <laughs> I think that's that's another lovely shrink, gene. It, it's really upsetting, I just love the chocolate. It's, it's chocolate. Yeah, and my dad loves chocolate, my mom loves chocolate, we, we yeah. all love all the desserts. I actually just did a tested chocolate, uh, low-carb chocolate cake. Ooh, how'd it come out? Her mom's, it was, it's all right. I think I overbaked it a little bit because it wasn't, it was kind of like crumbly. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've overbaked it. Oh yeah, you probably overbaked it then. Yeah, I know. I love all the sweets too. So that's why whenever my husband's like, should I get you anything for Valentine's Day? I'm like, well, you know, chocolate or candy. You know, that's, that. I'll never turn that down. The flowers you can keep, but I'll take all the chocolate. For sure. Especially if you're, like you said, going through the online where they just deliver it because it's expensive. And I definitely would rather have that Sherry's Berry that should definitely be a sponsor of us. I know. You know? <laughs> Sherry's you know? Berries. Have you gotten the hints yet? <laughs> we laid out all of the hints. All the, all the hints. So now we just need uh, Joe Rogan, chocolate Sherry's Berries, and uh, what was the other one? What was my first one? that um singles box oh yeah the swag box of the box. single yes. box yeah yeah look Hell. at that our first podcast and we're <laughs> we're, we're we're trying we're trying here all right <laughs> we're trying oh <laughs> too funny well i think that was our main our main jest we kind of we we did better than i thought we did we kind of stayed on topic for the most part we have a really bad tendency in our family to get way off topic. That's pretty much life for us. Yeah, that's definitely our yeah, family. You, you know that meme that's like you tell a story and it's got a side story of a side story of a side story of a side story. That's our family. Yes, that's our stories in general. I'm sure all of my stories are like that. I'm like, wait, let me tell you this other story that relates. Wait, yeah. that's been me this whole podcast. What? <laughs> And then you like Make have to think back to like, wait a minute, what what was I talking about to begin with? Because then you get so sidetracked that you forgot what you were originally talking about. And I also feel like I have the bad tendency to listen to somebody, hear what they're saying, and then be like, oh, I have a funny story that connects to that. I have a story that like I can say too, which has also <laughs> been me on this podcast right now. And this is what you're in for every two weeks. Which I guess we probably shouldn't say that because we don't want people to unsubscribe already. <laughs> They're like, oh God, every two weeks you're going to do this shit to me? No, I tr- promise I'll try to behave. No, we no will. Problem. We'll try to behave and we'll have even no. better stories than our first story of asking to work and getting turned down. We've got a lot of good stories. Well, and I don't think we want to blow all of our good because a lot of the stories that 
we have been involved with and we have heard over the years, most of them, I would say, are pretty much about relationships. And you definitely don't want to spoil and have one podcast three hours long and then not have any other material. So well, on the other I think the one story is a good start. Oh, yeah. No, that was a good start. Um, and it was kind of funny because my mom literally told me about it today. So it was just, it was very suiting. But we're also going to talk about a lot of um, deep stuff, but really good stuff. Um, we're going to have some guests. It's going to just be Connie and I for probably at least three or four episodes. Um, And then we're going to start bringing on some really awesome guests. um, Basically ones that are going to talk about stuff that anybody could go through and how they've come out and have a thriving business now or how they've come out on top and they're doing amazing things. So basically just to inspire you that even if something really terrible happens, amazing things can still happen after that. I mean, and how to deal with some crap that you like not necessarily life changing horribly horrible events but even dealing with like little stuff oh yeah you know what I mean like it's not necessarily losing a limb or which we are going to talk to somebody that lost all four limbs which is crazy and he's and and he's written a book since then so it's awesome yeah he's a rad person I I hope he's going to be on here I hope so, too. Well, and we're also hoping for Joe Rogan, so come on, Joe. (laughs) Drop us a line. We're not popular yet, but we're getting there. (laughs) We will get there. Um, So, yeah, we're going to talk about all this. And I'm going to talk about military life, too, um, because, you know, my fellow military. Huh? And I'm sure, because I got questions, and so do other people, I'm sure. Well, and it'll be perfect, because you'll be the perfect person to ask the questions that people that aren't in this life will want to know, and I will be the one to answer them, and it'll be great. And, um... Yeah, and we'll talk about basic stuff, like when the toilet explodes, for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> or how to deal with a remodel, because I just did that, and that That's was crazy. That's perfect. Well, hold on. Not even just a remodel. A remodel where you hired a family member to do it. Oh, yes. And where this family member and my husband were the only two people working on the house. Guess how long it took? A long time. Too long. Honestly, yes. And would I do it again? Never. Never. Not ever. And I'm sure you are not alone. And it has nothing to do with a family member. Let's just say that. It is my own personal preference. And Tom, because we already kind of want to move out of this house, is already like uh, showing me like houses from like the 1800s that have been remodeled and I'm like absolutely not new construction from now on new construction ready to move in ready to go turn what do they call that turnkey turnkey yes yeah 100% yeah. like no I don't want to do anything don't make so me. yeah <laughs> we're going to talk about all that good stuff uh how to get how to deal with it because you know it happens to everybody and sometimes you just need to listen to two funny cousins are we though i'm just kidding uh, we are we are we, I, at least my husband my calls feeling... me funny all the time so <laughs> so clearly clearly he and, has to be right and and i tell my husband that i'm the only person that i that thinks i'm funny which is probably true <laughs> we'll, we'll find out we'll find out we will for sure we're gonna get comments like these two are ridiculous they just keep talking. They when just will it end? end? Now we're about good. We're 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 gonna we're gonna cut it here in a minute, so don't worry. Yeah, I don't have any. Idea. That was the main thing. Was just to also tell you guys like that we're not just gonna yammer for forty five minutes every two weeks. We will we legitimately sit down with each other and discuss like what we want to talk to you about with you guys. It may get a little sidetracked. Stories. Yeah. It may get a little sidetracked, but we do have a point. We got lists. We got stuff. We got stuff to chit-chat about. We shall do. I mean, because honestly, we really didn't even scratch the surface of relationships. But I feel like we're just keeping it a little bit lighter, a little bit fluffier for, like, continuing on. So that I you'll thought just you said Thor, and I got excited for a minute. What? I thought you said Thor. Thor. Oh, yes, yes. We're we're doing this for Thor. We love (laughs) Thor. He's really good looking. (laughs) 
<laughs> Continue. AKA, <laughs> Chris, AKA Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, or just the God. I don't know. Is the God good looking? I have no idea. Anyway, yeah. but we right. want to keep this going. So yeah, we'll end it at that. Thor is, Thor is hot. <laughs> <laughs> listen to our podcast no, no, okay. come on come on down <laughs> come on down wow are we on the prices right now oh that makes me think of grandpa oh this no. is for you grandpa you know, what's weird? you know what's weird is guess who now watches the prices right and like all of the shows my grandpa used to watch is my dad it's weird that doesn't I'm surprise like, me I'm like who are you You're, well I guess he is old and retired <laughs> Um, okay, that. you also He's need to, retired. you also need to ask him because I want to know what his answer is. Why he carries around a stuffed animal all the time? Oh, I already know the reason why. So I've stopped asking, and it is because it is popular in England t- that these bears are like get are very rare, and people like it's a thing in England to carry them around and take pictures of them doing stuff. So he wanted to bring the trend to America because it is a hand quilted little bear. That it's weird. He's a grown adult. They shouldn't be in his purse, but they are. So he has a purse are. too. Well, sorry, his wife. It's in his wife's purse. I was gonna say, whoa, he started carrying a purse. He's really escalated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. All right, not- all right, all right, people. So this will be our last question since supposedly this is the trend. I mean, I was in England, but it was a long time ago. I went in two thousand three, and I don't remember seeing a single person with a bear. So English it's a people. Very tiny- knitted bear do people actually carry it around is it a trend in england is it a trend and should it be a trend here because honestly it creeped me the fuck out considering that he is an older retired male yes it's strange if he had pictures of it with it it's weird it's weird so ring in on that that's your last question podcast peeps would you carry around a bear and take weird pictures of it when you like and not for your kids like we're not including kids in this like just you as an adult yes because he doesn't have little children that it would be cute and funny with we are all grown adults and he has gotten this hobby after all of his children have become adults so that's strange very strange and if we have any english listeners which i hope we do at some point will you please confirm or deny this this uh, claim that he has. And we'll bring up all of these questions. If we get any answers, we'll bring them up uh, the next podcast. Yes. So next podcast listen in cool. for the answers. Yes. And yes. for our, our stunning uh, personalities Absolutely. or something. <laughs> so listen for the answers. We'll have them. Hopefully somebody answers them. If not, we'll just make up some. Exactly. We'll just say what we think. <laughs> right. We'll just keep saying what we think and pretend. Uh. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Rietta. I'm Connie. And thank you for listening.